Hey, g'day guys. It's Calvin from the Cartoon Company down under in New Zealand. If you're doing 1UZ work, doing 1UZ conversions or wiring, then it would pay to hit that subscribe button and uh, push the little bell notification so you keep up with what I've got happening. You know, I do a heap of 1UZ stuff. I'm attempting to take what's up here from my 16-ish years of working on 1UZs and get it onto video. Today we're going to talk about fuel injectors and what fuel injectors fit. The question that always gets asked when I say something like this is, what injectors should I put into my boosted engine running X, this, this, this and this? That's for another day. Look on online calculators, throw some duty cycles in, throw some horsepower figures in, that'll tell you the answers there. Today we're going to focus on what actually fits, what you can physically put in the hole. And I'll touch on VVTI as well because they are different. Just a touch. We have two main injectors, factory. This one, which is a light purple, you could call it mauve, but I don't think mauve's in the man vocabulary of colours. No. Black, white, red, yellow, green, blue. We'll do a light blue and a dark blue. Mauve, it's a bit marginal. This one is the dark blue. It's not light blue, it's dark blue. So we're going with light purple, dark blue. Easy. Light purple, approximately 215 cc's, fitted to the early crowns, early LS 400s. Dark blue, approximately 250 cc's, fitted to your SC 400s and Saurus, your later LS 400s. Rough guide, try to break the rules. If you're swapping ECUs or playing with different ECUs, pays to match that injector to your ECU because it will change your fueling. I had a high ace van, had a Sora ECU many years ago. Never went quite right. You know, I was working my way through it, had it on the dyno, didn't make the power, did some searching. It was meant to have dark blue, it had light blue. It explained extremely lean mixtures at cruise. Oh shit. I need a fuel rail. The reason I didn't have fuel rails is I'm doing a job on a surf or a forerunner as the geos get in America. And I'm doing a wiring job and I used the Gen 2 fuel rails for the particular job to make up the wiring loom. Now the Gen 2, being the round cast rails, only have the crossover tube between the two at one end. They don't have it at the back. Fuel pressure regulator at the back, dampener at the back as well. Extracted the Gen 2 fuel rails, and we have some Gen 1 fuel rails, which are the, the uh, billet with the flat machine tops on them. This one came out of a engine that had the cold start injector. You'll notice that the inlet is further forward on the, on the left hand rail and the regulators at the front on the right hand rail. We also have some VVTI ones just as a comparison on injector sizing. Now what injectors fit? I have a range here. We know that these two fit 
So they, they're bigger and they're smaller. So they fit in nicely. I have some 7M. I think these ones are actually might have been out of 3S. That's a 440 low impedance. Here's some RX-7s. Look pretty much the same. A little bit higher, but a different plug. They will fit. Oh, another Nissan injector of some sort. Physically looking pretty good. They will fit. RX-8, 550s. Yep, pencil post. Exact same plug. Fit in exactly. Oh, what have I got here? A Nissan one. It's got a little pipe thing on the top. Um, similar to VL Commodore and some of the early Nissans. Um, yeah, nah. Nah, nah, they, that, that won't fit. No, that's not, not going to fit. Side feed, Nissan. Yeah, no, nah, that's not going to fit. Side feed, Subaru. Mm. Nope, no, no, that's not going to fit. These Asian blue ones. Yep, they'll fit. Here's an Audi in a Bosch style. Bigger O-ring. Physically kind of look the same, but a bigger O-ring on the bottom. So not really going to fit there. And give me a rail. Mm, no, 14 millimeter O-ring. What's this green one? Nissan something. Oh, it's a Denso, no. Here's a green Denso with a square plug. Yep, that'll fit. So what did we see? Japanese style. Top feed, 11 millimeter top O-ring. They, they generally fit. Your aftermarket ones, like your ID, Injected Dynamic, they will fit if you get the top right tops, because they're little tiny things. So in the aftermarket ones, you're looking for that 11 mil top, the overall length being about the same, and the correct seal at the bottom. And then they fit. It's pretty simple. I'll do a couple of measures just to show you a couple of details. And check out the rust. Oh. This vehicle is fighting me. So I don't think I will use, oh yummy, these injectors. I'm pretty certain they're destined for the rubbish. Look at that corrosion and, cor look at this. That's awesome. Now where's the wick? Look at that. Oh no. So we're not using those injectors in this job. Keeps going. That hole there is uh, pretty much 11 millimeter. So the top injector O-ring needs to be 11 millimeters. The OD of it needs to be 11 millimeters. Bit of crush. Oh, that's starting to crush it. About 11 and a half there, that's good. Okay, on the injector itself, there is a cushion. Cushion. There's the O-ring. And there is an insulator on the bottom. The insulator sits nicely into the manifold. The bottom of the injector 
It's around about a nine millimetres. So as long, and the overall length. Now the length is, I'm going to actually measure from the inside groove to the base seat. I'm expecting about a 60 millimetres. And it's coming up 59.4, close enough. So that is as long as those configurations are adhered to, the injectors will fit. Resistance. Just a quick note on Toyota resistance. Looking at the plug with the lock on the top, if the tabs are at the top or up high, that is going to be a high impedance. The tabs are at the bottom or down low, that will be low impedance. If you're stuffing around with different size injectors on the stock ECU, check your mixtures. People talk about this factory ECU compensating. It doesn't compensate that much. What it does is it fires a millisecond, which fires the injector for a certain number of milliseconds based on the parameters of the information going in and it calculates it and fires some fuel in. Change those parameters, such as more airflow, then the milliseconds will change. Really simple. Aftermarket ECUs, tunable, and that's generally why we're swapping injectors. We've turbocharged it, we want to keep our duty cycle down, we need more fueling. When you're choosing injectors, you want the smallest injector that will do the job depending on the job you're trying to do. If it's a road car, it's going to spend most of its time ticking along maybe at 10%. And it's going to spend very little time at 90%, 95%. Whereas if you're building a race car, where you're revving the crap out of it all the time, you don't want it spending its time at 90%. So you're going to get a relatively bigger injector to try and keep your duty cycle down because that's where you're mainly using it. We'll do that in another day. What I've discovered here is these guns and those injectors, which are the ones that actually came with the engine that is fitted to this truck, that wasn't prepped. I am swapping fuel rail, so they weren't the ones that the person was trying to make it run on. <sighs> Let's have a very quick look at the VVTIs. Very quick. This is a VVTI manifold. Straight away when we pull the injectors out, you'll see they physically look very, very different. These back ones here are just like the front ones, but they've got little covers on them and foam around them, that covers come off. So let's just take one of these. The top O-ring, is the same size. VVTI do have a different part number though. They do swap over. But we've got this other bit here that physically makes them look quite different. That is because of the air injection, okay? So they're quite a different setup. You can run a more normal one. These seals, factory early seals, kind of fit. But you have the air injection holes. So if you're going to do swapping injectors on VVTIs, you need to do a little bit more research. There are some bigger VVTI injectors available. Um, I think some of the JZ range have bigger. And online I have found some thousands in the VVTIs, in that air assisted air injection, air assisted injectors. I've done a video on the intake manifolds. I explain how the air assistance works. So um, we'll look at that a bit closer on another time. But VVTI, not the same as non-VVTI. 
One thing I see a lot of is the rubber wear on the injectors goes hard and causes leaks and that one runs away. This is a rubber seal, hard as rocks. And even just small leaks can cause a difference in your air fuel ratio. I've seen it on a couple, just light, slow speed surges. New set of injector seals making a huge difference. Stalling issues. Gen 2, stalling issues because the injector seals are leaking. So I've just popped a new set of uh, rubber wear onto these injectors. I generally find um, one trick when you're putting them together is to make sure I put the seals in the bottom, the insulators in the, into the manifold. I go on dry at the bottom, but a bit of lube at the top where it's going into the rail. I generally find a, a little bit of lube to make things go together a bit easier. And generally what I do is I actually sit them into the rail Take the rubber that tried to climb out. In they go, nicely, nicely. And the same on the other side. the other one had the dirty dirty dampener I'm not using that and the regulator crossover tube do some bolts up and it's done so the quick answer on what injectors fit 11 millimeter top, 60 millimeters from bottom seat to the lip on the top uh, O-ring. Generally Japanese style. Aftermarket, plenty of options. Really easy, real simple, and change your rubber wear. Put new rubber O-rings and bottom insulators on. So I hope that was helpful. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.